Hello, everybody. It is Kathleen Burns Kingsbury for my live event on Breaking Money Silence on Negotiation. If you are attending live, thank you very much. I appreciate you marking this in your calendar. I do it every week on a Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern time. I understand for you people on the West Coast, that may seem like a ridiculous time. So let just note that I'm doing it at 9 a.m. Tuesday mornings. And when you have 9 a.m. on your coast, uh, it certainly will be available for you to watch on replay. So today we are going to talk about four scripts for getting past no. What do I mean by that? Well, when we are looking at negotiating, one of the first pieces we need to do, even before we get to the negotiation table, is determine what our price is going to be for our service. Now, that is a art. It is not an exact science. And part of what you need to do in your pricing is really think through your pricing strategy, uh, identify what the competition is charging, identify where you want to be in the market at the low end, the high end, or somewhere in between. And then you want to make sure that you can justify your price, that you can explain why you are priced the way you are. It isn't just because or because I want to make more money. It is I am priced this way because I've been, for example, speaking publicly, doing keynotes for 15 years. I have a master's in counseling psychology, an undergrad in finance, and I have expertise because I have taught hundreds and thousands of people about money psychology, whether that's at a college course in a master's program or undergraduate program, or whether that is somebody I have coached or someone I have trained. So you see, there's a reason why my price point is not the bottom of the barrel, because I have more value to offer than maybe somebody else. And my pricing strategy is to work only with ideal clients, not to work with everybody and anybody. I don't need to be on the road that much. And at this point in my career, that isn't the type of work that I find satisfying. So you need to do all that work leading up to before you can get in a negotiation conversation and be able to practice these scripts. So I want to discourage you, but if you haven't done that work, I, I really encourage you uh, to do that pricing work. So with that said, once you set your price and you know what you are going to charge, one of the hardest things I think for especially newer consultants or newer service professionals or sales professionals is to stick to that price. The idea is the minute somebody counter offers, you go, oh, I need the job, I need the job, especially given what's going on um, with COVID and going on in the economy. I understand that anxiety that comes up to say, I better make this work. I better split the difference. But you're gonna wanna first think about do you want to do that? Because you thought a lot about your pricing strategy. And second of all, if you do reduce your price, <clears throat> you can end up resentful. You can end up not working with your ideal client. And typically it just isn't an enjoyable thing. So here are, so once you've done that work, here's what typically happens. You go into a conversation with a prospect and you uh, talk about your value, you find out what they need, and you get to the place in the negotiation conversation where you are sharing your fees. Now, this shouldn't be at the beginning of the conversation and it shouldn't be at the very end. It's somewhere in between. And again, that's an art, not a science. That's something that I coach people on. So when the negotiation conversation and the fee conversation comes up, this is what you need to do if someone gives you pushback. And by the way, before we give you the four scripts and how you're gonna overcome them, if someone's giving you pushback, that isn't a sign that you're priced wrong. That's actually a sign that you might actually be priced right. If your pricing is where it needs to be, you should get at least 20% of people pushing back. If nobody pushes back, I think you're leaving money on the table. So you need to learn how to get past no and how to overcome pricing objections. And this is something that I teach in my courses. This is something that I coach on. And this is something that I actually have to practice for myself. Um, I know for me in the pandemic, 
um, I priced something too low because the psychology, my own personal psychology got the best of me. So anyway, I digress. So let's talk about the uh, typical ways in which people say no to your price. The most common one is you say, my price is, or my fee for this project would be X, Y, and Z. And someone goes, oh, you know, I would love to hire you, but we don't have budget. We don't have budget. So how do you handle that? Do you just go, oh, okay, well, let me know when you do? No, you can turn this, we don't have budget objection into something that actually leads to an experience where you're learning more about the firm, you're learning more about their budget, their monetary uh, constraints. And often what I think is if somebody says to you, that price doesn't work or we don't have budget, then maybe you haven't done a good enough job uh, screening that person and or selling your value. So what do you do when they say we don't have budget? And this just happened to me maybe three months ago. Uh, after several conversations, I heard, oh, we don't have budget for that. Well, I would have loved to hear that in the fourth conversation, not the fifth conversation, but sometimes that's how it happens. So how did I handle that? I basically said, well, you know, I realize that my price may be different than what you anticipated, but I provide real value. And then you go on to explain the different ways in which you provide value. So you don't make it about the dollars and cents. You make it about how they are investing in you, whatever you have to offer and the value you have to offer. And so when I talk about your value, it isn't just your credentials like I named earlier. It's also what impact are you gonna have on this firm? Are you gonna bring them business? Are you gonna save them time? Are you gonna help them expand because they don't have the bandwidth or the employees to do what they need to get done? Like you really need to think about what value are you bringing to them and how can you support the price where you are? So we don't have budget isn't an absolute no. This is, okay, well tell me a little bit about what budget you do have and let me tell you about the value that I provide and that you may want to look for other places to fund this particular project because it's going to be worth it. You're going to get what you need and what you deserve. Now, sometimes you're not even talking to the right person. So we don't have budget. Then you need to also make sure that you're talking to the person who can write the check, who actually is in control of the budget. But remember, we don't have budget isn't an endpoint. It's just a starting point for talking about money and negotiating your fees. So I hear that one all the time. I would love to know what people out there think about how they have responded well to the budget question. A side note, the engagement I talked about where we had four conversations before they told me that I was out of budget, and they kind of already knew what my fees were, so it isn't like I blindsided them, I actually walked away. Because what I realized in the conversation that we had about them not having budget, is they weren't my ideal client. They didn't value or respect what I was bringing to the table versus somebody else who they ended up hiring. I don't know the name of the person, so this is not personal by any stretch, but a, a speaker and a consultant who's very new, who doesn't have the track record that I have, and that's okay. That is their business choice. But what I'm encouraging you to do is when you hear we don't have budget, don't give up. Think, oh, I have to explain my value more, and this is great. We're gonna have a money conversation. So the second um, objection I hear around price a lot is, and not just me, but with the people that I coach and the people that I work with, is your competition charges less. I don't really like this one because I always think, well, that's kind of insulting. <laughs> I focus in on my firm, my value, my price point, my business model, and I encourage you to do the same. So when somebody is comparing you to somebody else, it's really kind of interesting because really what that says to me is they often aren't comparing apples to oranges. They're just comparing dollars to dollars without looking at the return investment. So again, you need to come back with something that is going to encourage the conversation to continue. So typically I'll say something like, wow, that's really great that you're looking at all your options. Um, I know that in my position, 
you just fill in the blank what your position is. There are people that charge all over the map. And so I'm wondering, and there are certainly people who charge less than me. So I am wondering um, what you are willing to invest. And also I'm hoping to get a chance to explain to you how my business model is different. Now, this may or may not apply to your business model, but I know there are a lot of people who are speakers, uh, that aspect of my job, that speak for free or speak for very little. And the reason that they do that is they are standing on stage and they are pitching their services. They are uh, using it as a marketing opportunity. Now, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that, but that is not my business model. So explaining to your prospect what your business model is, why your price point is different maybe than some of the competition is part of explaining your value. And when it comes to me on stage, the value that I provide is education. I'm a college professor. I am somebody who's been educating my whole life. I believe in learning, I value learning, and I love empowering people to learn something new, especially about their money psychology. And so when I explain my different business model and why my price is the way it is, often what I find is then we're no longer having a conversation about the price, we're now having a conversation about return on investment and the value that we can provide whoever is in the room. So keep in mind when they start talking to your about your competition that it's really just a sign that you haven't explained your business model and you haven't explained your value and your pricing 100%. Now, the one caution I give you here, never bash the competition. A lot of people that do what I do, I really like them no matter what their business model is. So it's very easy for me not to bash the competition. I also... Um, when there is somebody that maybe rubs me the wrong way, it just isn't uh, professional. It certainly comes back to haunt you. Just never bash the competition. It's like 101. It isn't worth it. It makes you look bad, may even give the business to the competition. And I know when it happens, when I'm looking for a vendor, when I'm looking to hire a consultant and they bash the competition, I check them right off the list. So don't fall into that trap. It's not worth falling into. We're not in high school anymore. We're running a business and we are overcoming pricing objections. So that's objection number two. Objection number three, I can't afford your fee. I love when people are that direct because I can't afford your fee. I mean, there's no guessing what they're talking about. It's just, you know what? I can't afford that right now. So what you talk to them is you, first of all, thank them. Thank you so much for being honest. I really love when I can have an honest money conversation with somebody, but I'm curious, uh, what would have to change in your business or in your life in order for my fee to be affordable? So the conversation isn't about you reducing your fee. The conversation is about what are the roadblocks that are in the way, that are getting um, in the way of you hiring me and being able to quote unquote afford me. Now, not everybody is going to choose to invest their money in what I or you have to offer. That is up to them. That is their prerogative. Don't take it as an insult. I mean, we all make choices based on our money psychology and our values, what we're going to invest in. Um, so when somebody says, I can't afford your fee, often what that means is I either don't see the value or maybe I'm not your ideal client. I'm not somebody who invests in what you have to provide. As a side note, I once, uh, this is many years ago when I used to have my ongoing blog, wrote a blog about money mindsets and pricing. And so I was staying at a hotel, which I did a lot pre-pandemic. And I remember thinking that with the hotel, um, they were going to charge, I think it was $15 or maybe even $12 for me to go to the gym. So I had to pay $12 to go to the gym when I had already paid for the room. And I just thought that was ridiculous. So I decided I would walk outside. I was not gonna pay the $12. Now $12 isn't a lot, it's not gonna make or break me. Was it gonna be a business expense? Not gonna pay it. So I walk outside, I have this great walk, and then I walk in and I decide I'm gonna sit at the bar after my walk and I'm gonna have a glass of wine, something I enjoy doing. And the bill comes and the wine is $16 because it's a swanky hotel. I drink my wine. I pay my tab. I go up to my room and then I look and I go, isn't that interesting that I will spend $16 on a glass of nice wine, but I won't spend $12 
on a gym membership for a day or two while I'm at a hotel. So when people say they can't afford it, you got to remember, it means some roadblock for them. I could afford the $12. I just wasn't going to invest there. So keep that in mind. I can't afford it means they're either not your ideal client. So maybe you haven't done some screening that you need to do, or maybe you're just starting to realize this isn't somebody who's going to invest in my coaching or in my speaking or consulting services. And then if you do think it's your uh, ideal client, then it's helping them identify what are the roadblocks and helping you understand what will it take for them to get to a place to invest in you. Now, depending on the type of work that you do, you may have a short sales cycle where you know people say, I can't afford you, you explore it and then you move on. Or you have a business similar to mine where you are a consultant, a coach, um, somebody who is providing you know, content development, intellectual property, licensing, that kind of thing. And there's a long sales cycle. So this could actually be the beginning of a great conversation about money. I can't afford it means you can talk about what are the roadblocks, how to get them out of the way, and again, how to really position things where you will be able to help them with what they need, but to maintain fee integrity, which is to maintain the pricing that you have thought through, that you have decided that your business and your revenues are modeled on. Okay, so the last pricing objection that is really common, actually, I think it's the second common one after we don't have budget, is I don't have the time right now. We'll, we'll use a coaching example. Um, somebody, you know, uh, reaches out, says, you know, I'd like to coach with you. I'd like to learn more about my money psychology. Maybe I'd like to um, get better at my pricing and negotiation conversations. And we get to a place where they say, I give them the, and they say, you know what? I just don't really think I have the time to invest right now. And that's when everybody gets to decide what they're going to do, what they're going to spend money on. But when they do that, there's an opportunity. And the opportunity is to validate their experience. So you say something like, sounds like you're really busy right now. Can you tell me what your top priorities are? So you start to understand what is this prospect's values? What are their top priorities? And then you start to drill down into when and if coaching, in this example, might be on the list. Often people will talk themselves out of the, the uh, excuse. So it can go, I don't have time right now. You say, oh, you know, I realize we're all so busy and it is a time commitment. Tell me what your top two or three priorities are right now. And then they tell you, oh, well, coaching is one of them. So you realize, and they realize that coaching is one of them. So is it really that they don't have time right now? Or is it really the price? Is it really you haven't done a great job of selling value? You're not a good fit. I mean, there could be a variety of reasons, but you have to get curious. Anytime someone says, no, you need to get curious, open up the dialogue and really explore what is going on with the buyer or the prospect. Because getting past no requires financial conversations. It requires you selling your value. It requires you being confident and it requires you to have some patience. Often these conversations aren't 30 minutes, one-time events. They're ongoing dialogues with people that you have in your pipeline. So today, I hope these four scripts and the ways in which you can overcome these pricing objections has been useful. I am actually going to put on the screen, um, I am going to put uh, in the comment section, actually, I was trying to put it on the screen, but I am not always the best at being able to do that. Let's see if it works. No, didn't work. Nope, not going to work. So I don't want to waste your time. <laughs> anyway, what it says is that if you want more tips and tools on breaking money silence on negotiation, I have two free resources for you. One is that I have a podcast, um, Breaking Money Silence, been going for 125 episodes now. I have so much fun doing it. You're going to want to check it out on your favorite podcast app and it's called Breaking Money Silence. In September, I'm doing a whole series, so that's six episodes on negotiating. So you're gonna wanna definitely check that out. And the easiest way to be reminded of that is to subscribe. And you wanna go to podcast.breakingmoneysilence.com to do so. We will send you email notifications, links to the episodes. You don't even have to worry about it. Um, so that is one free resource that I think is really worth your while, and it's really fun to do. 
Next, we have uh, my online course that's free. And this online course is called How to Conquer Your Fear of Negotiating. And I have had both people who are very experienced in sales and also people who are very new to selling themselves and their services uh, go through that course. And I've gotten really positive feedback. People find it either reassures what they're doing and gives them some new creative ideas or really just opens up this area of money psychology to them. So I encourage you to check that out at breakingmoneysilence.com backslash negotiating hyphen four, that's F-O-R hyphen four. Free. That's breakingmoneysilence.com backslash negotiating hyphen four hyphen free. And you can have access to that free course and start to explore how you can break money silence on negotiating in your life. This is Kathleen Burns Kingsbury saying, I hope you have a fabulous Tuesday. Enjoy the summer weather and I will see you next week. Until then, bye-bye.